on. I don't think I've ever used this phone more than a few times to record anything. <clears throat> uh, hey, Dad. So, uh, we're all here in New York at the motel. It's uh, Queens, actually, in Astoria, near the NQ. Uh, Rebecca's off getting batteries for something. Sean's in his room doing whatever Sean does. And, uh, you're out getting some food. Me? Well, I'm supposed to be getting ready to break into some offices in the financial district. Feels just like prepping for one of your old training drills, actually. Ten years go by, and then you show up, and it's like, uh, like I, I was never gone. And we're right back to the ball busting and the conspiracies and the paranoia. Only this time, I believe you. I believe every word. You know, I don't even think you know the half of it. I, I don't think you know how much I've seen, how much I've, I've learned in just a few weeks. Everything, really. I feel like, uh, like I've, I've lived a thousand years, or, or, or ten thousand, maybe. It's impossible to explain. But when you see that much of the world through the eyes of so many, you can't help but be sad. And to see all these incredible, intelligent people fight the same battles, make the same mistakes over and over again. Because culture and knowledge and history, these things, they aren't passed on through our genes. Every kid on Earth needs to relearn the basics. How to live, how to survive, how to stand up for, for what's right. So much is lost in the transfer. So much is added to every generation. It's a shame. I mean, over and over, everything must be learned again. I met Clay, Dad. Clay Gesmeric, in the Animus. I knew him by his Abstergo handle, Subject 16. My, uh, my predecessor. And he showed me things. He passed them to me, just before he died. Or got deleted, or whatever. Everything he'd learned, everything he'd seen, uh, God, how do I talk about this? So, um, I guess you, you trained him, huh? After I left, he really looked up to you, and now that I've seen through his eyes, I, I think I understand why. I'm glad you had him around, even if I wasn't there. The things he showed me. Unbelievable things. And I never... Shit. All right, I'll... Back in a second. Okay, uh, it's been a few weeks since the last recording. Sorry about that. Of course, I guess it's just a few seconds for you. I'll leap down the playlist. Um, anyway, uh, I was talking about Clay. Uh, Kazmarek, uh, Subject 16. So, when I fell into a coma back in Italy and woke up in the Animus Black Room, it was, um, so calming. It felt like I, uh, had woken up into a dream. A haze. A, a dream where none of this mess had ever happened. Uh, felt like I should just be getting ready for another day of pouring drinks at bad weather and, uh, another day of complaining about being between girlfriends and Wondering what the hell to do with myself. But, uh, when I saw Clay, just sitting there, it started to come back, you know, piece by piece. And when he told me about Lucy, I, uh, <laughs> fuck, you know, it, it hurt. You know, realizing that I killed her without thinking or feeling anything. Not at the time, anyway. Well, then, things just kept piling on. There were more memories of Ezio and Altair and the first civilization. And then, right before he vanished, Clay passed on his memories to me. 
showed me everything he had seen and lived through, and it was... It was brief, but overwhelming. I'm not really sure how to explain. He saw glimpses of Adam and Eve and their escape from slavery. He saw the beginning and the end of the war between the first Civ and humans. He saw Minerva, and Juno, and Tinia trying to work out their, their calculations. At least that's what they called them. They, they had these tools, these powerful uh, machines that could predict possible futures. Not what was going to happen, but what, uh, what, what could happen. Probabilities. And, well, they spent a lot of energy trying to figure out what was the most likely scenario for the future. Theirs and ours. And in the end, I guess they figured I was their most likely candidate. Some guy named Desmond living at the beginning of the 21st century of the Common Era. But which Desmond was the right one? Because, you see, probability is a weird thing. It can branch out in so many ways. Which version of me did they need? Was it the Desmond who got married early and had a son? One who stayed single in New York, or, or was it the Desmond who moved to San Francisco to be a waiter? Maybe uh, it was the Desmond who worked at an auto body shop in Chicago, or... Maybe it was the me who never ran away from his parents in the first place. First Civ had countless variations to choose from, but... In the end, the, uh, lucky one was me. I'm the Desmond their best calculations spit out. I'm the Desmond they left their messages for, and I guess I have to live with that honor. What an honor. Pretty tired. Uh, there'll be more later. Ciao. Hey, Dad. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's funny. I, I have this memory of you, uh, when I keep coming back to, and I, I always think about it when I'm working or just before going to bed, uh, because it, um, sort of calms me, I guess. Um, I was 14, I think, and, um, and, and you were trying to teach me how to, to walk with a light step. Remember that? How to be mindful of how much noise I made when I moved around. Simple stuff. Stuff I understand now, but back then, I, uh, gotta tell you, I thought you were just being <laughs> an asshole. Uh, so, uh, you told me you were gonna go up to your room and sit with your back to the door and read a book, and you wanted me to wait at least 15 minutes and then sneak up there and tap you on the shoulder without you knowing. I, I even remember the book you were reading at the time, the one by, uh, Captain Johnson. And you warned me that if you caught me, we'd have to start all over. Then you went upstairs. And I waited. I waited, and I waited, and I waited. I waited four hours before deciding to go up. And even then, it took me 20 minutes to get to the foot of the stairs. And uh, another 30 to get up them. And then 10 to get down the hall. And there I was at the door, and into your room and I was I was so hoping that you'd be asleep but no no you you were still reading and I just about shit myself but ten minutes later I was just five feet away from you and that's when I remember setting my foot down and you flinched ever so slightly I thought maybe I'd imagined it, but I knew you'd heard me. You didn't say anything. You just checked your watch, you reached for your drink, you took a sip, and then you kept reading. But I knew I'd failed. You didn't say anything. I, I, I didn't understand why. Then I lunged and tapped you on the shoulder. And you turned around and, oh, fantastic, you said. And you scooped me up and you gave me a big hug. And I didn't say anything. But, Dad, Dad, I was so pissed off. 
I wanted to scream at you. I, I failed, and you knew it, but you said nothing. And I stayed mad for weeks. I thought you were, you, you were patronizing me. I thought maybe you decided right there that I was never going to be the man you wanted me to be. But I realized just a few years ago that you checking your watch, that was the clue, wasn't it? You let me win because I had been so patient. And I guess that impressed you. You know, maybe at that moment you thought it might be better to be my dad instead of my mentor. I, I don't really know. Maybe for you, they're, they're one and the same. You know, either way, I'm happy to know that both my mentor and my dad are looking out for me that day. I didn't understand that then. I think I do now. So, this will be a short one, Dad. Uh, something to remember me by if things go south. If I don't make it out of the temple today. I've tried to be optimistic about all this, but I, uh, I just can't. I think spending all this time at Connor's memories has made me anxious. I mean, his story is so painful in so many ways. Still, he never lost hope when his faith and others eroded. I can only believe that what we are doing is the right thing, and that I can stop this disaster. I know this. I mean, the technology is there, waiting for us to use it. I'm the final piece of the puzzle. Something in my genes, or my memories. Some final piece of code to switch the whole thing on. That's why I'm here. That's why they brought me here. Only, uh, I, I don't know what I'll have to give up in return. My sanity, my life, it's, it's impossible to say. I do know this. Our battle with the Templars will not be over. But whatever's inside that temple is not an ending. It's just another chapter in this, this endless story. And it'll be your job and Mom's, and, and Sean's, and Rebecca's, to keep turning the pages. You know, I, I keep thinking about something Orson Welles once said. Something like, if you, if you want a happy ending, it all depends on where you stop telling your story. So maybe, maybe that's the answer. Maybe that's how people keep marching forward. If something goes wrong in there, Dad, something happens to me. When you tell my story years from now, please tell them the one about how I lost my way and then I found it again. Just in time to save the world. And then just end it there. That'll keep everyone smiling. Bye, Dad.